Welcome back to the Cloud Plus 2024 refresh due to the new, due to the new test. Uh, we're on Cloud Architecture section. This is the third video on that. So if we look here, we've covered this section. We just covered this section in the last video, and now we're going to cover this these last three concepts. So, uh, and we'll be done with Cloud Architecture. Sweet. So, um, Cloud Architecture. Explain the importance of database concepts, compare and contrast methods for optimizing workloads using cloud resources, and identify evolving technologies in the cloud. Um, so explain the importance of database concepts. So database storage management, whenever you're a database administrator, the main thing that you need to pay attention to is uh, making sure your data is safe. Um, so how it's stored, how it's it, it backed up, how it's restored in case it gets destroyed, lost, or corrupt, uh, making sure that there's a way to protect that from nefarious actors, from leakage, um, and making sure that the, it's fast so that you can get the data when you need it. Um, scaling. Scaling is hard with databases because of ACID. Um, so uh, the atomic... Uh, consists uh, anyway um, trying to make sure that you process everything that needs to be processed at the moment in time when it's needed and all the related things at, at the same time so um, because of that it's really hard because when you scale it if you try and so you can scale it vertically just which is putting it on a bigger system going from two CPUs to four CPUs to eight CPUs right so that's easy, um, but that doesn't get you indefinite amount of processing. So there's limits there. Um, and it's a single point of failure. So there are options. So you could do uh, read replicas and then scale horizontally, but have all the others only read only. Uh, for that matter, the read only ones, you could send um, specific uh, query so you could shard the databases so chunks of, of certain types of information go to this area certain types go to the other areas um, to other databases so that you're spreading the load across multiple systems uh, but you still want one source of truth so you, you have to write to one um, database that's with read-only replicas um, so that's not always good so you can do um, fell over databases where one's active, one's passive, um, but you can have active active. It's, it's just hard because you have to worry about keeping every, uh, keeping the transaction together and processing it properly and avoiding these nasty deadlocks that we can get in databases. So scaling it with databases is kind of hard. Um, platform support. So making sure that what you're, uh, the database that you're using is supported by the application that it's that's using it. So some applications will only run on Oracle. Some will let you run on MSSQL, some on MySQL. Some let you choose, but if they let you choose, then they're more complicated uh, because usually the, the SQL is not always the same. So you actually have to tweak the SQL or have a coding uh, system that can alter that automatically for you. Um, so platform support really matters. What type of, of um, database is it? Um, cost, how much is it going to cost? Are you bringing your license with you? Are you having to purchase the license? Is it part of the subscription? Uh, does it meet all the security and compliance concerns that you have? Uh, maybe some of those are regulations or legal type things. Um, how is it optimized? What levers can you pull to optimize it? Uh, is it going to be fast enough for your needs? Are you paying too much for it? You wouldn't mind it being slower. Uh, who has control over it? These are all things you need to ask. And you can run databases all the from legacy in your local system, on your local hardware, in your local private cloud, all the way up to software as a service. There's software as a service databases. For that matter, you can do infrastructure as a service. You can run a database on an EC2 instance that you manage. Um, and then you can control it that way. 
the cool thing about the software as a service ones, some of the scalability, they manage it for you. So they obfuscate, they take away some of that um, difficulty because they, they manage that for you. So compare and contrast methods for optimizing workloads using cloud resources. So you need to right size what you're going to use. Um, that way you're not wasting resources. You're only paying for what you, what you need to use. Um, making sure it's the right size so that you can scale. If you're running something that's really big, is it possible to break it into smaller ones uh, so that it, it's easier? Some types of workloads might need different types of systems. So in Amazon, you have the EC2s, you have on-demand instances. They're expensive. They're there when you need them, but you just go and you spin it up. If you know it's going to be around for a long time, you should reserve that time. And when, res when you're reserving it, you have the options to say how long. Do you want it to be locked in or do you want to be able to uh, modify it? Um, do you want to pay it all up front, which would be the cheapest, but then you don't get the interest and it's more like a fixed cost? Or do you want to pay for it monthly um, and then it's slightly more expensive, but you're paying for it monthly, so it's a variable cost. So you have all this flexibility. And then there's even spot instances. So spot instances are more for things that aren't as, at, not as time sensitive. So a great example. Um, when, earlier in my career, I had to manage day, week, month, year end type processing. So it would start at a certain time and we wanted it to finish by a certain time. Um, if you had something like that, you could spin up a bunch of spot instances and get it done right then and there. But spot instances you pay less for because if someone wants to use them, like for say on demand, it'll get yanked from you. So uh, they give you a little bit of a warning. So make sure that your workloads can handle that. On top of that, um, if they're not available, maybe just wait because you have all night. And you know that if it gets too close, then you can switch to on demand for the last 30 minutes or whatever and spin up a bunch of them and get it done and just pay a little extra that day. Um, but Spot will save you um, uh, quite a bit of money if you can manage it going away when people want it. They do alert you. You have a certain amount of time to shut things down nicely if you need to. So the, the jobs that run on Spot uh, instances should be able to be interrupted. Um, and if you design them that they can be rudely interrupted, just disappear, you don't even have to worry about the notification. You just let them, them crash. Um, otherwise, you have to make sure you bring them down nicely. Um, your processing. Auto scaling. So uh, if you get the load, can you just spin up another instance and manage it and take care of it? So auto scaling really helps because what if you become famous for whatever reason um, then what can happen is it'll just spin up the additional instances to handle the load requests that people are coming to your site because you're famous now um, now you have to pay for some things but that can that can manage it automatically and if you're set up well if you're getting more people hopefully you're hopefully you're getting more funds to be able to manage the cost so, uh, but managed services, sometimes you just don't want to manage it and you want to let them deal with it. So software as a service is, is great there. Uh, there's also extra tools. Sometimes with these uh, software as a service or any of these different as a service models, there might be something that they're doing that you're not already doing. And you might want to ask yourself, oh, should we have been doing that? So we're not doing it and realizing it's a bad thing so paying the little extra to do it is actually a good thing. So these extra tools that might come along and then just really thinking about the cost, making sure the cost is um, something that is manageable and that you're not wasting so much. Oftentimes you have to go and find out what people have, are doing so that it doesn't cause too much problems. Um, okay. Identifying evolving technologies in the cloud. I, I'm expecting that uh, this was an interesting one. I'm expecting that what they want to understand here is um, 
some of the cool things that are coming out. So even thinking about story, I, sh I showed you that S3 thing uh, a little bit back. There's just so many different options. So it's always changing. Um, the fact that if you have petabytes of data to transfer to AWS and you're at a place where you can drive a semi to one of their, their endpoints for the semi, you can have a semi come, come to your location, hook in and put the petabytes into the semi and then drive the semi because it's faster than trying to transfer it over the, the internet. Um, and then you could be moving petabytes of data um, versus gigabytes or terabytes. So storage, there's so many cool things that are going on there. EC2, you might not have the hardware to test every client device out there. Well, guess what? AWS might. And so you can actually pay to use that to test your stuff on and not have to worry about having all these different things, types of hardware. For example, a Mac, they have the ability to, to run um, on the Mac chips. So then there's cool things like ground station where you can talk to satellites um, in AWS. There's private 5G, something that's cost prohibitive for most businesses. It just, it, it baffles me. Wavelength, where you can cache things on 5G cell, well, on cell towers in metropolitan areas. Um, it kind of is a metropolitan content delivery edge thing. So, and then there's all the capabilities of AI machine learning that come to bear. Uh, oftentimes you don't want to have all these idle resources. Well, training models in machine learning takes a lot of processing. If you don't want to buy and then have it idle when you're not training, just train in a cloud uh, environment. And then you can come back uh, when you're not using it, you're just not paying for it. So uh, you're, you don't have that infrastructure cost. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. We are done with this section. And next time we move on to cloud development. We'll see you in the next one.